On May 15, 1996, a hearing before the Permanent Subcommittee of Investigations of the Committee on Governmental Affairs, United States Senate, 104th Congress, would convene in Washington, D.C. The goal? To discuss Russian organized crime in the United States. They would call witnesses including government officials, members of law enforcement, and former members of Italian and Russian organized crime. This is the testimony of Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Testimony of Anthony Casso, former underboss Lucchese Organized Crime Family, accompanied by Matthew Brief, law firm of Brief, Castleman, Knapp, and Shulman. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. My name is Anthony Casso. Early in my life, I was given the nickname of Gas Pipe. I have been in jail since 1993, when I was arrested after being a fugitive for almost three years. At that time, I was the underboss of the Lucchese organized crime family. Ultimately, I decided to cooperate rather than go to trial. As a part of my deal with the government, I pleaded guilty to a 72-count indictment, including murder, racketeering, and extortion. I have not yet been sentenced, and no promises have been made to me for my testimony here today. As a part of my cooperation agreement, I told the government about my life of crime. I gave a deposition for use in an Israeli trial, but I have not yet testified at a trial in the United States. I will testify if requested by the government at upcoming organized crime trials. I have been involved with organized crime for more than 35 years, since I was a kid working on the docks in Brooklyn, New York. When I was 21, I became associated with a guy by the name of Chris Frenari of the Lucchese organized crime family. Everybody knows him as Christy Tick. Before I was arrested this time, I had only been in jail once. That was in 1962 for five days, when I was convicted of running a bookmaking operation on the docks and was fined $50. After that, I was arrested several times for different federal and state charges, including assault with a gun, selling stolen property, dealing heroin, burglarizing a bank, and bribing state parole officers. In every case, I was either acquitted or the charges were dropped. In the early 1970s, I met Vicka Musso. Then, in 1974, I became a maid member of the Lucchese family. Vic was made in around 1977. At that time, Tony Ducks Corallo was the boss of our family. But in 1986, Tony Ducks went to jail, so we had to name a new boss. I became capo in 1986. After discussions within the family, Tony Ducks made Vic Amuso the boss at the end of 1986. At the end of 1987, Vic told me I was the new consigliere. Then in 1989, Vic named me the underboss of the family. After Vic was arrested in July of 1991, I ran the Lucchese family as underboss while I was a fugitive. In my position as a member of the Lucchese family, I came to know individuals associated with Russian organized crime, which is the subject I have been asked to testify about today. In the mid-1980s, our family got involved with Russian organized crime in the gasoline business in Brooklyn. Italian and Russian organized crime made large amounts of money by working scams to avoid paying taxes on gasoline. The Russians owned hundreds of gas stations and controlled the supply and distribution of gasoline. We provided them with protection they needed to maintain a cartel. We also helped them set up corporations to work the scam. The main Russian guy working in our family was Marat Balagula. Marat was one of the early leaders of the Russian organized crime in Brooklyn. He made millions off the gas tax business, and our family made a lot of money with him. In around late 1986, another Russian named Vladimir, whose last name I did not know at that time, came up to Marat in a Russian restaurant in Brighton Beach. Vladimir had recently arrived in Brighton Beach from Russia. According to the Russians, the word on the street was that he was a tough guy with his own crew. Marat told me Vladimir pulled a gun, put it next to Marat's head, told Marat that he was his new partner, and demanded Marat pay him 600000 or Marat would be dead. Marat reached out to us and told us what happened. We agreed to meet him the next day. When we went to Marat's house, we found out that he was so scared, he had a heart attack, but did not want to go to the hospital. I remember seeing Marat in bed, hooked up to all kinds of machines, refusing his doctor's orders to go to the hospital. Marat's guy wanted us to kill Vladimir. Since Marat was with our family, and especially since he was such a moneymaker for us, this was not just a threat against Marat. This was a threat against the Lucchese family as well. We knew what we had to do. Vic and I agreed that Vladimir had to be killed. We took the situation to Christy Tick, who agreed that we would have Vladimir killed. Vic gave the hit to Joey Testa, 
We asked Murat and one of his guys to get us some information to identify Vladimir. One of Murat's guys got us a picture and license plate number. We had Murat call Vladimir and arrange to have lunch with him at the same Russian restaurant in Brighton Beach where Murat was threatened. After leaving the restaurant, Vladimir was shot and killed. I heard about the murder on the radio. Murat was very thankful that we had gotten rid of his problem. We could not let somebody try to put the squeeze on one of our family's biggest money makers. After that, Murat didn't have any more problems from any other Russians. I found the Russian organized crime groups to be very clever. We knew the Russians were involved in heroin trafficking, as well as complicated scams involving forgery and tax evasion in the oil and gas business. The Russians were also very willing to use violence to achieve their goals. I will be happy to answer any questions you have about my knowledge of Russian organized crime. The following is a conversation between Senator William V. Roth and Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Mr. Casso, at this time, do you know the man you identified in your statement as Vladimir to be Vladimir Reznikov? Yes, I do. And in addition to the murder that you just described in previous testimony, we have also been told of another murder in Brooklyn of a Russian organized crime figure who worked with Lakosa Nostra in the gas tax scam. That is the killing of Michael Markowitz, who worked with the Colombo family. What were the facts surrounding this murder? And describe any discussions you had with anyone in the Colombo family regarding the Markowitz murder. I had discussions with the Colombo boss Vicarina and a Colombo soldier, Frankie the Bug Sciortino. Will you please speak into the microphone? And I knew the Markowitz murder was going to take place sooner or later, that they were working on planning on killing Markowitz. Now you testified that the Lucchese family provided protection to Russian organized crime in the gas tax scheme. Specifically, what protection service did your family provide for the Russians? We provided that no one would go into their territory and sell gas, and made sure people paid them the monies they had coming to them. And we would make it known that they belonged with us, our group, and no one would bother them at all. Now you testified that Murat Balagula was a leading figure among Russian organized crime in Brooklyn. Why would he contact you after he was threatened by another Russian? Because Murat was with our family, so the proper thing to do was just what he did, to contact us to handle it. Where is Balagula today? He's in federal prison, I believe. Did Balagula actually ask you to have Reznikov killed, or simply to make him back off? No. He wanted him killed. He was deathly afraid of him. Did you receive any payment for killing Reznikov? None whatsoever. Was Joey Testa given any payment for the killing of Reznikov? None. Now you testified about pleading guilty to a 72 count indictment, including murder, racketeering, and extortion. How many murders? I believe 16. I'm sorry, I could not hear you. I believe it was 16. Was Joey Testa ever charged with the killing of Reznikov? And where is he today? He was never charged with that murder. And he's at a federal prison also. Now you stated that you are a made member of the Lucchese family. Would you please explain what that means and describe the initiation ceremony by which you became a made member? To become a made member, you have to be sponsored by a captain of the family who would bring you to the boss of the family and sponsor you to become a made member. They have a ceremony with the boss, the consigliere, and the underbosses present at that time, and the captain who brings you in. They prick your trigger finger and make it bleed, and then they put it on a little piece of paper. They set it on fire, and they burn it in your hand, and you repeat after them that you will never betray La Cosa Nostra, or you will burn like the paper is burning in your hand, and your life does not belong to you anymore. Your life belongs to them. Now we know that the Lucchese's were not the only organized crime family involved with the Russians in the gas tax business. What role did you play in getting other La Cosa Nostra families involved with this tax scam? Well, what we did was, the Colombo boss came to see me, and we put it together. The Russians wanted it put together, so there was no more problems. The Russians would get paid, and everyone would not steal each other's stops, and put everything above board. So the Genovese family had a branch in the gasoline business also, with their own group of Russians. What I did was I reached out for the Genovese family. I met with them. I met with their underboss. I told them that we wanted to have a meeting with the Colombo family the Lucchese family, and the Genovese family 
and that the people we have running the gasoline business for us, who go up front and handle this every day with the Russians, have a meeting. And let us all make this one. We will put it together, and everyone earns an equal share. And this is what we did. We had this meeting. They agreed. We put it together. Being that everyone agreed, we turned around and we told the Russians that they would have to pay a tax of a penny a gallon to us, to our three families, which totaled maybe 500000 a month. And they agreed upon this. They were very happy because they could run their business without having a problem from anyone. So now we had three families involved. We had the Genovese family, the Lucchese's, and the Colombo family. And we ran it like that till about 1988. In 1988, the Gambino family wanted to get involved. They also had a Russian group that they were working with, but in a little smaller way. And that group was interfering with what we were putting together. So we took it upon ourselves. We had another meeting about the Gambino family, and we were going to invite them into the cartel that we put together, which we did. We made it a four-way split, and we had four groups. The Gambinos had a Russian group, the Lucchese's had their own Russian group, the Colombos had Markowitz and his Russian group, and the Genovese family had their own. We just combined it like that, and it was running real smooth. Do you know if these kind of agreements are still in effect? In the present, as far as I know, yes. As far as you know, yes? Yes. Are you aware of any other murders committed by the Cosa Nostra families on behalf of Russian organized crime in connection with the gas tax scheme? I know there were a couple of murders with Russians with the Gambino group, but I do not know their names. But I knew a couple of murders that took place with them, with their group. How would you characterize the Russians as business partners? They were good businessmen. They are good businessmen. And as far as money-wise... Whatever you have coming to you, they always made much more money than they gave organized crime. But we always knew that. The following is a conversation between Senator William Cohen and Anthony Gaspipe Casso. Mr. Casso, how did you get the name Gaspipe? They have been calling me that since a very early age, when I was a teenager. It was like a family name, and being that I was the youngest of three children, it stuck with me. No association with your activities? The nickname? None whatsoever. You mentioned going to the hierarchy of authority when Senator Roth asked you why Marat came to you as such. You said he was just simply proceeding on a line of authority. Basically, that it was just the proper thing to do. So you had your own organizational structure. Since you were the enforcers, basically, or the protectors of Marat, I assume. Yes, right. Okay. Do the Russian criminal gangs have the same sort of hierarchical structure as any of the Italian families, such as the Gambinos, the Colombos, the Lucchese's? Do they have capos, consiglieris, underbosses, a boss? Do they have anything like that? Not really. So they are not structured? Not in this country. Not in this country. No, they have gangs, and their own crews, the Russians, and most of them are violent amongst themselves. This is why we handled it. We would never want Murat to go get someone else to hurt someone else. We would rather him come, because maybe there is no need to hurt someone else. Maybe this is a situation where you can talk to someone and resolve the problem. But the Russians are not that way. They're a little hot-headed, and they are a little violent sometimes. You indicated in your statement that they are not afraid to use violence. Do you mean that they are not afraid to use violence against one another? That is right. But they would not use violence against the Lucchese family members, would they? No. Why do you think that they had to come to you to get protection? They did not have enough muscle of their own? That they would simply say, we don't need to pay you a penny a gallon for your protection? It is not only protection. It is putting it together because, like Marat, he owned a couple hundred gas stations. So when we put the cartel together, now no one else was going to go into his stations to sell gas a little cheaper, just to sell the gas and they say start fighting amongst themselves again. So we held peace, and you know, protection goes more than one way. And you indicated finally that the Gambino family came in toward the tail end of this arrangement, because they had Russian connections as well. If another family comes along with a Russian connection, will they keep expanding the business? No, to be honest with you, we just barely let the Gambino family in. Okay, that is all I have, Mr. Chairman. That is all we require of you, Mr. Casso. I would ask that all spectators remain seated until the witness leaves the hearing room, 
and I would now direct the Capitol Police and the Marshals to accompany Mr. Castle from the hearing room. 